Have you ever found yourself stuck in these same patterns of thinking, unable to come up with new ideas or find creative solutions to your problems? If so, you're not alone. What's your secret sauce? First principles thinking is the path of the scientist and philosopher. It can be a powerful tool for unlocking your creativity, solving problems more effectively and finding greater success in both your personal and professional life. No, 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 come on. Like, you can tell me. Like, what's the secret sauce? We go from the techniques of the ancients Aristotle and Socrates to the current AI developments and the recent explosion. A first principle is a basic proposition or assumption that cannot be deduced from any other proposition or assumption. It's the most basic, fundamental truth you can arrive at. Aristotle called it the first basis from which a thing is known. In math, these are axioms or postulates. We can say first principles are known by nature. And yeah, that's a lot of weird words, so let's just run through an example. It's the new year, so many people make resolutions. And a very typical resolution is getting better fitness, gaining muscle or losing weight. How would we approach this from first principles? Well, it might involve breaking down the problem into the fundamental principles of biology and physics and using these principles to reason about how to design an effective workout routine. For example, we might consider the principle of energy balance, that the energy we consume from food must be balanced by the energy we expend through physical activity and other metabolic processes in order to maintain a healthy weight. From this principle, we can reason that in order to lose weight, we will need to find a way to increase our energy expenditure through exercise or decrease our energy intake through a diet or fasting. Other first principles that might be relevant here are the principles of muscle physiology, which govern the way that muscles grow and adapt to different types of exercise, and the principles of kinematics, which describe the motion of bodies and how forces acting on them affect that motion. By starting with these fundamental principles and using them to reason about the problem, we can come up with a more effective and sustainable fitness plan than if we had simply tried to copy existing workouts or follow conventional wisdom. You can already tell, however, that you need to have a good understanding of how the world works. You need to study the basics, the fundamentals of our world. The first principles. One of the key benefits is that it allows us to approach problems in a more systematic and logical way. Rather than relying on preconceived notions or past experiences, we can use first principle thinking to identify the root causes of a problem. And by that, come up with innovative solutions that are based on a solid foundation of knowledge and understanding. This is not a quick and easy process. It requires patience and persistence. It takes time to fully understand the fundamental principles underlying a problem. We usually go through the world reasoning by analogy, basically pattern matching, like a machine learning algorithm. This is necessary, because otherwise you would go completely insane if you try to act out of first principles for every single action you take in a day. It does, however, make sense to get to the root of the more important problems of your life. Quick side note, I have just enabled channel memberships here on YouTube. If you enjoy my content, learn something from it or it inspires you, channel memberships are an option for you to support my work. It's completely optional as a form of patronage. It's not a paywall for more content. I have the hope that channel memberships could play a vital role in sustaining the channel for the long run. Back to the actual video. One way to get to the root of problems is Socratic questioning, which involves a series of open-ended questions that are designed to help people think more deeply about a topic or issue, identify contradictions or inconsistencies in their thinking, and clarify their own beliefs and values. This method contains clarification questions to clarify the meaning of a term or concept, example questions which ask for specific examples of a concept, evidence questions to find reasons to support a claim, and consequence questions which ask about the potential consequences or implications of a belief or action. First principles thinking and Socratic questioning are both approaches to problem solving that involve breaking down complex problems into simpler parts and examining those parts in detail. This is also how developers think. I really resonated with this comment from one of my previous videos. Everyone is suddenly realizing it's not about coder versus not coder. It's about can you think critically, learn quickly and problem solve. That is the coder's mindset. Okay, and what does all of that have to do with artificial intelligence? A seed of AI is rooted in something called a neural network. Neural networks are a mathematical model used to translate the first principles of human thought, neurons, into mathematics and then into computers' interpretation of that math. In early 1666, 19-year-old Gottfried Leibniz wrote on the combinatorial art. Leibniz proposed an alphabet of human thought, 
All concepts are nothing but combinations of a relatively small number of simple concepts. Just as words are combinations of letters, he argued. All truths may be expressed as appropriate combinations of concepts, which in turn can be decomposed into simple ideas. Leibniz wrote, Thomas Hobbes, everywhere a profound examiner of principles, rightly stated that everything done by your mind is a computation. He believed such calculations could resolve differences of opinion. The only way to rectify our reasoning is to make them as tangible as those of the mathematicians, so that we can find our error at a glance. And when there are disputes among persons, we can simply say, let us calculate, without further ado, to see who is right. This is mirrored by the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence, which can be seen as one of the founding documents of the whole field of AI in 1955. The conjecture that every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. Soon thereafter, however, AI started to shift paradigms, from symbolism to connectionism, from defining and programming every aspect of learning and thinking, to statistical inference of finding connections or correlations leading to learning based on observations or experience. Today we call this field deep learning. Here is Ilya Sutskever, chief scientist of OpenAI. He's a major contributor to the field of deep learning with over 250,000 citations. In this clip, he explains how this breakthrough came to be. Spoiler, it's because of first principles. But for some context, back in those days, everybody knew that you cannot train deep networks. So today we take deep learning for granted. Of course, a large neural network is what you need. How can it be that we did not know that? How could such an obvious thing was not known? People were really focused on machine learning models where they can prove that there is an algorithm which can perfectly train them you really end up restricting the power of your model. In contrast, neural networks, like the fundamental thing about neural networks is that they are basically little computers. And when you train a neural network, you program this computer with a backpropagation algorithm. And so the, the thing that really clicked for me is when I saw this, these results with the Hessian free opti optimized, I realized, wait a second, so we can actually program those things now. First principles thinking is also how OpenAI's mega hits Dolly, ChatGPT, and GPT-3 came into being. OpenAI's CTO Greg Brookman describes it as the secret sauce that led to the success of Stripe and OpenAI. He operated in both of these companies as CTO. Um, so, you know, I think that a lot of how we approached Stripe was thinking from first principles. Like, I remember when we were pre-launch and we, you know, we had some buzz going because we had some early customers. And one of my friends took me out to lunch, who was a VC, and he, he was like, all right, like, I've been hearing about this Stripe thing, like, what's your secret sauce? And I was like, I mean, we just make payments really good. And he's like, no, 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 come on, like, you can tell me, like, what's the secret sauce? And really, that was the secret sauce, right, is that we had just rethought every single piece of what we were doing from the ground up, from first principles, not sort of locked into the way that people had been doing it. And we asked, how should it be? Like, where's all the pain? And, you know, does it need to be there? And I think that in AI, we did much the same. We really thought about, okay, like there's this field that we're entering and that we hire a lot of people who had been in the field, but a lot of us also hadn't been in the field and we came to it with beginner's eyes. And I think that that approach of just not being beholden to all the ways people were doing it, but also becoming expert in the way that, that things have been done. Because if you just throw everything out, like, you know, you're also just going to be starting from scratch in, in a not helpful way. So as you can see, first principles thinking played a huge role in the recent AI explosion. It's something I want to get better at myself. I want to get better at understanding the basics and understanding them well. Speaking of understanding and learning, some time ago I made a video on learning how to learn with the seven best science-based techniques. It also explains focused and diffused thinking that you can absolutely link to first principles and out-of-the-box thinking. So check that out next.